Today, I will be meeting the founder of this virtual reality company. He will be sharing with us the story of how he is able to build this amazing business. Wow, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate the time you will take to join me. So, what's your educational background now? So, I have a background in electrical electronics engineering from the prestigious Ladoke Akintola University of Technology. So, yeah. Wow. So, I graduated. What, what are the things you, you, you did? I gave learning a lot of um, soft skills priority, so how to use the AutoCAD, which, um, which is the software that does it proficiently, and all of those. So I had to learn that out of the school syllabus and all of those. So, and they were really um, the skills that has actually helped me very much, very much, I tell you. My first job, which I got after service in Lagos, that was with a power firm, an Indian firm, so that I was based on my certificate. I worked with other frontier companies such as Lambert Electromech. Lambert is a, is a big company, a Lebanese company that um, does electrical and mechanical design and installations. So I worked with them because of the skills I learned. I worked at Yenagua on a very, very interesting project. It's a Nigerian content development monitoring board project. It's a huge one a 17-story high-rise and um, a multi-level car park and office, office complex. So if I had not gathered this skill, this skill out of school, it would have been almost impossible for me to work with um, such a firm as an entry engineer at the time and giving me the responsibility of a site engineer. So, Like the project you are doing, is it based? So your background is mechanical, right? Electrical, Electrical engineering. engineering, OK. So how do you get to learn about, because I, from working in here, I can see a lot of VR stores and other programming. How do you actually learn from electrical to VR? How do you actually learn about VR? You know? Yeah, I attended a project, um, project management event in Lagos. Okay. So during, it was an interlude session of the place that was meant for the training. They wanted us to experience the, uh, the virtual reality experience. It was my first time. It was somewhere in Yaba, so oh, wow. I played the, I explored it, I played it, I really liked it, and uh, going back, I thought, okay, if I bring this thing to Oshogo, it's a very hell of its kind. If that is if somebody has been doing it, which I've never, I've actually not come across somebody who, I know people do it VR, but not to that standard. So I met with the guy in charge, we discussed, I actually got to know the, the gadget, so we placed the order, because I, I have very good networks around me, so. That was where that, that, that was how it all started. Wow, it all started. That's interesting. Like I, I myself have actually tried the game on the VR, and that was even actually the first time I'm using the VR headset as well. Yeah, you you would love it. You would love it's it. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, apart from the VR, I see that you have other businesses around. I can see that you train people. You also have a product, a drink product. Can you talk? Us about that? Definitely. You so see, what, what, what was the story behind it? Interesting story, actually. So we, we secured the edifice we are in presently. We have a session that does the engineering design services. Then we thought, OK, we can actually start bridging the educational gap people face with theoretical learning and learning the practical aspect and what you need to put the, make the practical aspect to really interesting as an engineer you have aside managing the people use these um softwares very well so it will give you a good command of of stuff so when we started we have the engineering session but we cannot use the building judiciously with just the space we have allotted for um our engineering services so you want to train people on autocad too let them know they cannot know it very well without unrestricted access to a system. So I selling systems, a business introduced to me by a friend, a business partner too. So I've done, I've run businesses in the past too. So we allotted a space for selling gadgets because uh, of my exposure to VR, virtual reality stuff. So I thought I reached out to a friend, a very good friend. That is the benefit of building a very good network. So he resides in the US. I reached out to him, he procured the um the gadgets so we started putting it into use i used to have a personal one that i started exploring before we deemed it as a business space 
So and a session to train people. We allotted the space for the training. So then we thought, okay, this is a virtual reality center. We have it. Very nice space. People want to come in. I enjoy their virtual reality sessions. Okay, they get exhausted, they get happy, but they want something to refresh. So we thought, okay, we want to actually make a small cubicle where people can have access. But then I've been of the idea of wanting to let people get access to natural stuff. Not, uh, doesn't have it's processed chemical. sugar, preservative, all these things have negative effect on our health. And you can see the kind of... Um, terminal diseases we have that is traceable to our lifestyle so I felt if we are having a small space for we'll just be strict on selling just natural products we felt it would suffice to make the production day in and I've always uh, done uh, my family have always um, done tiger nut and um, produce tiger nut you know just for um, for refreshment in the house and we realized the compartments and the production cannot be contained in that compartment. So then we moved, we started producing from the house, bringing it to the uh, virtual reality space for people to buy. But then it proved like it's, it's not something we can do in the house, in a residential apartment, because we, start, we had to start um, fabricating machines, mailing machines, yeah, and other stuff. The, the, the demand we yeah, we tested the market. We saw it was what people were needing. The demand started to soar. You get it. So we started having increasing demand. We needed to increase our capacity. And as such, it is not something that can be contained in the house again. So we had to secure a factory where we now um, try um, did a, uh, a lot of other machines were fabricated and put in the installed in the factory. So that it is from the factory we make our productions now. We bring it to town. We spread. We have tentacles now, so we put it at um, some other places where it can be easily accessible to the people. And of course, you cannot do everything. Study the people who have done such, run such related stuff successfully. Then it's a challenge for you. Study how they have done it, how they have debuted it. In. Assemble a team. Let them see yourself in the future of the company. Don't just be the one who wants to, who want them to do the work and you take all the credits. No. Let them be very involved. So you just, you know, you have, you know how everything should run. So you just coordinate. You are not actually at the pivot of everything. That you kill yourself. Assemble the team. Let everybody function. Let them realize why they should do these things very well, efficiently. So that will make the system. And it's not like we are doing th things different. Like I've told you, they spark from each other. We have a session that does engineering design. Okay, we want to train people. People you want to train, they will need the system. Recommend the system. Let them buy it from you. Yeah. It works yeah. on it now. Okay, now we have uh, then from there we have a training setup where we train them. You see, it works on it now. Then we have a place where they can say, all oh, what can no play makes Jack a dog, but we have a virtual reality session. Yeah. From the virtual reality, okay, uh, these people will need to get refreshed. Okay. We want them to take something natural, they would like it. Okay, then Mumbai sprouted from there. See, Oshobo is not like Lagos, where everybody understands when you say VR. So how do you get to convince people to actually buy into the idea of using VR to uh, actually to play a game or do anything? It's, it's a service we're in so we can allow them to play a free game, a free session. So there are some people who would come around because of our flyer, our banner. But when people see games, maybe they may think it's, a, it's just all these general PS games, no? So at times when we have customers, probably if you if you get the system from us, if you buy a laptop from us, you may use that as something that would um, yeah, extra, like, like an extra you get. So when you play it, they you want to bring people around to let them have similar experiences you have enjoyed, and um, it's. It's getting better, like um, oh, that's, that's that's an interesting strategy to actually put people in. So and the few people who used to who, who have had it before, maybe because they were first introduced to the um, how do you call the scary aspect of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to play VR. I don't want to play. No, 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 no. There is the simple game. There are the interesting shooting game. You can have a virtual table tennis game, like you enjoy. Like it's, you know, it's a virtual reality. Simulate tour, so all of those very interesting games, and then you can uh, you can if you decide to play the horror ones too. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. So, 
how did you actually actually source the fund in the early days of the business? Firstly, make sure you are somebody who is trustworthy. Be somebody who people can trust with their money. I tell you this, there are people outside there who have the money. But I reluctant I uh, have this um, uh, uh, very reluctant in partnering scared of because of very, very horrible experiences they have had in the past when they let people have access to their funds because uh, maybe they want to go into partnership and all of this. So if you have a good network, you can have the idea someone else is out of the money. So try and have that synergy. Let the person know. So the person tests you with five naira. If you come back to say, if he assesses the way you have you know, utilized that five naira, then he would want to trust you with 10 naira from 10, 20, 50, and 100 naira. That is how it is. In my own case, it's very simple. I have friends, well to do ones. So some are not in the country. I reach out to them. And as a matter of fact, the gadget business, basically, I will tell you for a fact, it's something a friend, I'm not even the one that introduced it to the friend. He was the one that introduced the business to me. I just integrated it. And then it's a very good one. I really appreciate it. That is why your network is a determinant of your network. So build the right network. Be trustworthy too. And don't be a kind of person when the people trust you with their money and, and at the point of wanting to make, um, what's it called? Or wanting to account for the money, you start coming up with um, unnecessary stories and excuses. It doesn't work that way. Let your business be business and then uh, friends be friends, business be business, and build that healthy relationship, and then you can always have access to more funds. Wow. Because that person that has that trust in you will introduce another better fund with much funds, and then it will go like that. Every business face challenge. So what was your worst day in business? What was the worst thing that happened to you while doing this business? One, you see, as a starter, you are always desperate to make sales, irrespective of how the, uh, the channel. I have had horrible experiences in this business, I will tell you. And I will share maybe one or two with you. And I've learned from them. And I would wish anybody wanting to start any business would not make similar mistakes. You know, it's um, business when you start it, you have to advertise. The first people who would have access to it are your friends, your families. Yeah. And business has its own principles. Your chances of success in the business is a function of how strict, how religious, how disciplined you are with those principles. If you bend the principle 10%, your chance of making a success in business becomes 90. If you bend it 20%, it becomes 80. 50% it becomes 50. Then if you bend it uh, more than 50%, it becomes less than 50%. That's how it goes, frankly speaking. As starters, when I started selling business, okay, because you don't understand the principle. Nobody knew me selling business yesterday. Today, I started selling laptops. Then it's ordinarily, it should take time before I make my first sale. It's not like, um, okay, now people know I sell laptops. But he doesn't have the money to buy a laptop at the time. He would master it in his memory. This guy sells now laptop now. And I think he's a trustworthy guy. He has mastered it. So if he needs a system in one or two months, he will reach out to you. But then me that I procured the system, I want to say I want to start selling immediately, almost, almost immediately. You understand? So you get the spirit. It's a major challenge. Startups face. I I think everybody who has started a business <laughs> would have faced it. So people start. You know, and you know people when they see that this thing, they start saying, okay, eh, if you can sell it for me on credit, I'll pay you back by the end of the month. That is the first major problem. People are very wicked. People are very wicked. It may be deliberate or not deliberate. Well, that is just my own perception of it. I sold a laptop to somebody. He used to be my boss. That was my last project I did in Lagos. He approached me when he, he saw my advert or because I, I leveraged on the WhatsApp status platform. Okay. He approached me. He even had the effrontery of initiating a, a, a video call to be sure I was really the one making the advert. Okay. So when, did the, when we conducted the video call, he was sure, and I said he wanted to be sure he's not falling into out of his camera. It was an HP Revo. The system worth 160,000 naira. Okay, he said that he would be interested. He would first buy one. If, he, if the review is very okay with him, then he would be procuring for his family. This is a person I know that is well to do. I took it down to, place I, uh, to the place I know he stays well. So I handed over the system. He said, okay, no problem. Um, he would pay me by the end of the month. And 
I said he would pay partly by the end of the month and balance also going But I know he's somebody that can easily afford it, so I never had a problem with that. I have sold the system. January 2023 will make it two years I took the system to this guy, and he has not paid me a penny. There is another guy who has actually maintained a very good business synergy together, business relationship. I used to send him gadgets. He would send me the money. So the last time I s he said I should send him one Elite book, um, HP Elite book um, folio, which I did. He, he, he asked me if I have gotten the money in my account. I said no. I said I was thinking probably it's the um, network. So I never had any issues sending it. So I reverted back to him the second day. I haven't gotten the money. He said maybe I have to go to the bank. And I, I remember the other, but he used to have a bank. He sorted with the last time we traded on a gadget like that. So I never doubted him. But going to a week, two weeks, three weeks, one month, they had to call the person who referred him to me. I told him what I, I transpired. That was even like after two months. Like, I don't understand what this guy is trying to play, this, this, and that. He has not been picking my calls, this thing. So it was that person who actually now praised him because they are, they are related. So it, it was not even, I don't think he's the one who even paid it. He just paid me, he paid 50000 on the first payment, he made another payment of 15000 50,000. So I couldn't even press any further. So I still have my change with him now. That is more than um, a year now. It's oh, definitely is more than a year. So definitely, credit. When you sell on credit, it crumbles your business. How am I? How much am I getting? Uh, what is the percentage profit on this gadget? That now I've lost the capital on that particular sale. And where is the? When you have lost the capital, you start talking of profit. So you see. So I want to urge entrepreneurs out there, set the boundaries for your business. Even if it's a family member that is buying from you, let them know the terms and conditions that operate to your business and how you cannot bend the rules for anybody whatsoever, anybody. If you want to actually do business, that's the way you want to help somebody who is going in business. You cannot go to the mall now and start telling them you want to buy on credit. You people will go arrogantly into, into the mall. You not even have the leverage of pricing whatever it is that has been stamped. Then you come with your... No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. So, I, uh, like I've learned, I don't sell my... I prefer to have it. I don't know how many more demand requests of the particular the gadget I've sent, so that out of desperation. They now start having now. When the serious people now come, you'll be out of stock. So you get to learn from this one. So that's the major challenge. Then the, um, you know, it's a business that has to do with shipping into from the outside the country into the country. So the, the nose diving economy is not assisting, getting sourcing for the dollar to make your procurements at ridiculous rates. So we can just hope for a better tomorrow, but those are the challenges. And then making sales, you know, you have to leverage on social media now. You reach out to, we, we send items out. There are some other customers that would want to set out some terms of maybe wanting to make payment or delivery. Like it revolves around the first point that let them know you have the brand. You have that integrity at stake. The procedure is to payment validating the orders. When you make payments, I validate your order, I send to you. When you are not comfortable with it, you can revert to me which has not been a problem so um, but i have a brand you can spoil if you are the one who defaults in the course of the transaction i cannot you are not traceable i cannot channel my energy into tracing you because uh, my next question will be what advice do you have for nigerian youths or people that are doing business or those that want to start their own business what advice do you have for them <clears throat> it's basic one thing i've come to realize in this life is uh, <clears throat> being trustworthy trust has become very scarce has become very very scarce so when you see somebody who has that trait in the person since they are real no competition you have that leverage i tell you this when so but is something to be trustworthy is another thing to know what you are doing when you now com combine the two together you see people would want to do want to do business with you <coughs> with this business of gadgets and natural uh, drinks that we sell i cannot count to you the amount of um, highly influential individuals have actually had direct access to who are very interested in the kind of stuff you are doing and um, we have people who brought in kids for the summer camp first of its kind we did we organized at our hub and then you know they were really happy what the kids got out but basically let's be trustworthy 
It may be hard in the beginning, but I tell you this, you always have your breakthrough once you are trustworthy. Why I tell you this, being trustworthy can bring you better fortunes than being brilliant. Yes, being trustworthy can bring you better virtues than being brilliant. But when you are trustworthy, people can easily trust their funds with you. So, and if you are um, acute, if you are somebody who is intelligent enough to know how to use money too. So you gain, they will gain. It's a win-win scenario. So, and then um, people should research more, know what the trends are. Don't be lazy, be hardworking, be smart. Yeah, smart, working smart, outweighs and outshines working hard. So there is dignity in all of this. So work smart, know what is invoked, learn, relearn, unlearn necessarily, relearn, be productive. If you are productive, anywhere you will see something to sell, necessarily not needing capital. There are times that I will go broke. I will just get a call from one architect. Oh, hello. I've sent a design to your mail. Check it. Let me know how much you want to pay for it. Times that will be my, like extremely low. So then, you charge them. I don't need any capital to do a design. I execute the design. I, I get this stamp, send it to them. I get paid. I get paid partly before commencing it. And then they balance me after they see their job. So yeah, it's that skills. That's another thing. So learn the relevant skills, soft skills. So even if you want to do a business, physical business, you need capital. You can get the capital from the soft skills you have learned and then that will be all. So and another thing I would advise people that I think I mentioned that earlier in the session, like um, your network, your network is a function of your net network. So be with very good people. There are people I met in the four walls of the university that I can boldly say, I used to say it to people. I will still keep saying it. Relating with them, getting to know them, making friends with them was all I have made in the university. Like, I was not actually given the certificate. Making friends with them, Hello. establishing a network with them was all I gained in the university. It would actually have sufficed. Wow. I tell you, yes. It would actually have sufficed because they played real positive impact in my life. I've always been somebody who has been lucky having friends actually. So when you have a strong network around you, you would not know it will it will catapult you to success beyond what you even imagine. So relate with good people. You yourself be trustworthy, then and be intelligent. Whatever it is you do, do it at its very best. What if you were to be starting the business today again? If you are starting the business today again, what would you have done differently? I would do a lot of stuff differently. I would uh, polish my marketing skills, learn some stuff about marketing because, and how to advertise better because they say one of what I've come across while researching is advertisement is uh, making people buy what they don't need. So now you have what people need. So if you channel that energy that makes people buy what they don't need to what they really need, so you make more sales. And then I would, uh, I would strict 100% to the rule of business, to the uh, doctrines, the principles of business is what I would straight stick to. I wouldn't make um, panic sales. And then I, I would learn more. I would study more. <laughs> I'd apply a lot of stuff I've gained actually in the humble beginning and it would really have assistance. So. I'll also leave the contact to the business in the description of this video. So if you, can, if you want to patronize them, if you want to buy the Tiger Nuts and other products they have, especially the VR session, you will actually enjoy it. So I'll also leave the link to uh, all their social media channels and other stuff. If you enjoyed this video, the other video on the screen, you also enjoy it. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.